Here we have the inside of the 2021 Melio 294. If we firstly come to the main control panel, we can turn the 12 volt on, firstly by pressing this button, followed by this button. Once we've done this, we can turn the water pump on and off just here. Water pump needs to be on so we can get water out of the taps, flush the toilet, or fill the boiler if it's been drained down. Next we have awning light on and off. Beneath it we then have buttons that mainly give us information regarding condition of leisure battery, condition of vehicle battery, as you can see the vehicle battery is a little bit low at the moment and from time to time this will flash to let us know. It's currently now recharging itself up as we've now hooked it up to main supply. Also the solar panel will also charge it as well. Next we have how much water is in the fresh tank. When the waste tank needs emptying Red light will begin to flash next to the waste tank symbol just here to let you know. This last button here just controls the illumination of the control panel so we can dim it down or brighten it up depending on your personal preference. This here is just letting us know that we're hooked up to main supply and we will get a green illumination just here when we start the engine to let us know that the alternator is charging the batteries. If we now move across to the Truma control panel for the heating and the hot water you'll see at the moment it's displaying the time and is also again letting us know that we're hooked up to main supply. If we now press the button just here we will get a series of icons and as we begin to rotate they will begin to flash. So if we start with the first icon just here, this one is for your heating. So if we now click on it, we can turn the heating on just by rotating and then just pick whatever temperature we would like it to be inside the motorhome, right the way up to 30 degrees. To store in the temperature, just click again and you'll now see a little flame has appeared just there. That little flame just represents the heating system. It's just letting you know you've set a parameter. Whenever the heating is in operation, the flame will begin to flash and it will continue to flash until the temperature you've asked it has been achieved. The thermostat for the heating is just here. After heating, we then have hot water. Again, if I now click on it, hot water is off. All we now do is rotate and we can heat hot water in eco mode, which will give us a temperature of about 40 degrees. We can heat it in hot, which will give us a temperature of about 60 degrees. And we can also perform a boost on the boiler. The boost was mainly designed for if there's going to be more than one of you having showers in quick succession of each other. If you do perform the boost and the heating's running, the heating will turn off because it needs to use that extra power. After heating in hot water, we then have power source. So we're currently using mains electricity using two kilowatts. If I rotate, we can lower the power consumption to one kilowatt, which is handy if we're on a low amp site to try and stop ourselves from tripping. If we have both power sources available to us, we can run on a mixture of gas and mains at two kilowatts, or a mixture of gas and mains at one. Dual fuel mode is extremely handy, especially in the winter months. If you want to get up to temperature nice and quickly, it will only use the gas as it is required. And then our last setting is if we have no main supply at all, we can solely run on gas. After power source, we then have the circulation fan. We can either run the fan in eco mode and it will just gently trickle the air out, or we can turn it up to high. If we now move to the lower icons, this first one here is for a basic timer. So just click on it, 
select the time you would like the system to fire up and then when you would like it to end and then all you're literally doing is then just picking what you would like on within that time period. After that we then have clock setting so just literally just rotate And then lastly we have the settings menu within this we have offset so if you don't think the thermostat here is quite correct you can just slightly adjust it if required temperature just if you prefer that it displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit brightness of this screen itself 12 or 24 hour clock language Index, which is more for the technicians, it just lets them know what software it's running. And then lastly, full factory reset. From time to time, these will fire up error codes. They will usually be relatively basic stuff. So at the moment, we're running on main supply. So if we tripped or pulled the mains lead out, etc., it would then throw up an error code to let you know. A warning triangle will appear where my finger is, and then if you click on it, it will display the error code and then if you look in the manual or google it etc it will tell you what the problem is nine times out of ten as long as you rectify the problem the error code will just automatically disappear if it's a gas code you will have to wait uh, I believe it's between 10 to 15 minutes before the error code will go out for safety reasons this particular system can also be run on what's known as the iNet app so if we now move above the microwave just here you'll see the iNet box just here so if you go to the app store etc um, on your smartphone or tablet and download the Truma app what you can then do is control your heating in your hot water via that instead of using the control panel all you need to do is literally launch the app and then follow the on-screen instructions it will firstly ask you to press the Bluetooth button which is just located here once you press it Bluetooth signal will go out and then you will commence connecting up to the system if you are doing this for the first time usually an update will happen first once that update has ceased you'll then be able to control your heating and your hot water locally via Bluetooth what you can also do if you want to is register a sim card through the app the sim card slot is located just here where my finger is pop that in and then register it it does not need to be an expensive sim it does not require data, it just requires text messages. Whilst we're also in here, we also have the digital amplifier for the television aerial on the roof. These particular aerials do not require any masts putting up or down. All we need to do is just make sure that we're flicked on and we can control the boost just here majority of the time you need it virtually set to maximum once you've done that it's just a matter of tuning in your television as you would normally do at home etc for the first time with this particular Avtex TV it's just a matter of turning it on as normal these particular televisions come with a quick tune so all you need to do is just hold this orange button down and it will take you straight to the redo menu press OK and it will begin to tune in once it's tuned in you then just have your television guide just here and then it's just a matter of pressing on the guide using your arrows and then just picking what you want to view these also come with a DVD player this side USB connectivity on the top 
Next we have the location for the boiler and the main electrics for the motorhome. So if we just remove these covers just here, as you can see we have the Truma boiler just here and then we also have the main electrics for the motorhome just here. So here we just have underneath this just here we have the main trip switches for the motorhome so if something's not working on main supply you should first pull the call just to make sure nothing's tripped. Next we have the 12 volt fuses just here so if something's not working on 12 volt again just check to see whether or not you've blown a fuse. The main fuse that is blown in this particular model of motorhome is the 20 amp fuse just here so this yellow one just here this is the one for the electric drop down bed if there is too much on the bed when you put it up the motor will go under stress and it will pop the fuse to avoid any damage you will know the fuse is blown obviously because the bed will not go up and down but secondly the lights underneath the bed will also not work as they are on the same circuit this black box here is just the battery charger so this is what's charging the batteries when you're hooked up to main supply we then also have the three stage battery charger which is also linked to the solar panel as well just here with the boiler itself we have the boiler drain just here these particular drains are automatic so if the temperature inside this van drops below about three four degrees this valve will automatically open and drop all the water out of the boiler to frost protect itself if you are going to drain it manually which is what I always suggest you do when you're not using the van anyway because it's stopping any of the water going stagnant in it all you need to do is just twist the blue diamond on the top just there when we do that, so if I just do that now, you will see a blue button just pops out at the bottom. All we then do to reseal it back up again is twist and push the button back in. Once we've done that, we can then again make sure the water tank is full of water, turn the water pump on and it will begin to reprime itself. The water tank in this particular model is underneath the rear passenger seats just here. So again if we now just remove the cushions and then we just remove the cover just here you will see we have the fresh water tank. So we have the water pump just sitting on the top there and we can also gain access to the fresh water tank just here. So if we want to clean it out, etc., it's nice and easy access just here. This is a fully winterized motorhome. So if we just look down here, so this is directly behind the driver's seat. You'll see a switch here, which is on when the light is illuminated. This is for the heater that is located in the waste tank. So if you have water going into the waste tank and it's extremely cold outside, this can be popped on to avoid any frost damage. The fresh water tank does not have a heater in as it is an internal tank. Next we have the microwave. This will only work on main supply. So we have power setting just here, so we have low, defrost, medium, medium high and then high and then just our timer just here. Beneath it we then have the Fetford fridge freezer on and off on the black button just here. This particular unit is an automatic so if you are on A for Auto it will find the best power source it can for you 
So as we are connected up to main supply at the moment, it's put us onto mains electricity with a little picture of the two pin plug. If I now went outside and pulled the mains lead out, it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas. And then as soon as you start the engine, it will then automatically go over to 12 volt maintain to keep itself cold whilst on the move. As you can see, the screen disappears after a few seconds, so it's not annoying you at night time. All we're left with is just this small little blue light here. If we want to bring everything back up again, just tap it. This button just here, allows us to take it out of auto and manually put it onto main supply or manually put it onto 12 volt maintain we're going to get an error code at the moment as the engine isn't running and we can also manually put it onto gas next we have temperature control just here so the more squares the colder the unit is and then lastly we have anti-condensation jacket on anti-condensation jacket off you definitely want the jacket on in the warmer months this stops a build up of condensation behind the unit on hot days and then obviously it's stopping any moisture running down the back of it forming a puddle underneath it in the winter months you can obviously turn it off as it's not required We have the large fridge with a secondary travel catch just at the bottom here. And then we have the fridge, um, the freezer, sorry, compartment just here. And then to turn the unit back off again, just hold. Extract the fan just here, so we have light on and off just here and then fan on and off just on this side we have the hob so we have the electric hot plate which is operated just here red light comes on to let you know it's in operation and again this will only work on main supply we have our two gas rings so it's just push in twist and push the igniter Beneath that we then have the oven and grill, so push in to the left for the oven. And then push in to the right for the grill. Above my head just here we have the Omnivent fan. So if we now wind we can open the roof vent itself and then its middle button turns the unit on. And then we have extraction and cooling, variable fan speed just by pressing and then middle button to turn the unit back off again do make sure that the roof vent is down for travel we then have the front electric drop down bed do make sure the sink glass is down and if you have a TV installed that it is fully away and not left out it's then just a matter of pushing the button to then drop the bed down and then pop the ladder into the fixing points just here as you can see you can have all nets up all around the bed
if the bed was to malfunction to the point where you cannot get it either up nor down this can be a manually and this can be wound here so if we get the winder and then we come to this point just here just remove the blanking plate and then just up there there is a 13mm nut and then it's just a matter of winding it with the tool. You'll also see underneath here two light switches as well. On this particular model we have storage in the floor just here. And also beside the bed just here. Fit for toilet. So to open to the cassette, just slide the lever across just here, push the flush just here and then level indicator here. This will rotate round to red when the cassette needs emptying. Do make sure that this is closed or otherwise you will not be able to remove the cassette from the outside. We then have the basin and then if I swivel round we have the shower just here. At the moment this part is installed to stop the shower screen from moving in transit. <clears throat> we then have the fixed rear bed. This part here of the mattress will flap over so you can then go and access to your storage compartments. We also have drawers just here to gain access to these. We do need to slide the partition doors across. And then we can gain access 